we heard a rumor that Tough Dog four-wheel drive suspension was further developing its RV shock absorbers. And when we heard it's with our good mates from Signature Camper Trailers, we had to come to Sydney to take a look. We're talking to Mark from Signature and Simon from Tough Dog. Let's get into it. Simon, thanks for having us today. Now we all know Tough Dog, 38 years of experience in off-road suspension. And we know that you're starting to move or starting to develop more of the RV range. But before we get into that, can you just give us a bit more history about the company. We're well known for our foam cell product. We offer many different size casings in the big capacity foam cell as well with the external valves. New addition would be the upper control arms that we've been playing in that sector as well, the, the airbags. And look, you know, we offer a pretty well comprehensive kit of most vehicles, you know, the, the, the catalogue these days is out to 258 pages. So there wouldn't be a shock absorber or a coil or a leaf spring that where we would not offer multiple options. Hmm. Well, that's good. So 258 page brochure and there is some RV stuff in there, but now that's developing further and, and one of the first cabs off the rank locally, at least, is Signature yeah. from just around the corner. So. Yeah. When they came over, what was the process that you undertook to help them get the right suspension package for their trailers? Yeah, the thing about the signature trailer was the platform was there and it was something that we could definitely work with. I guess through fine tuning of the shock absorber, playing around with shin stacks, uh, we, we managed to um, you know, fit a, a really large capacity 60 mil OD casing shock within the space we had. Now, these trailers here, they'll run four shock absorbers per trailer, so two shocks per control arm, which is quite substantial. That's a lot of dampening capacity. Um, but look, it works in the favour of the trailer and it certainly irons out the bumps. Um, you know, the, the process was quite huge, you know, the time spent, and the guys from Signature also were quite invested in the process as well. And that's probably the important thing here is they really wanted to get it right. So by bringing the two of us together, multiple shock changes throughout each day, monitoring the heat range, and also ensuring as well that the geometry of the, the trailer, so the bump stops and the straps, all work within sequence of the shock lengths as well. Mm. So it's not just a matter of just you know grabbing a four by four shock off the shelf and just bolting it in and saying, yep, that's gonna be fine. Yeah, yeah, I, I heard um, off the camera before that, yeah, the the travel length was actually underdone with the original shocks that were on the trailer and, and the shock absorber was the actual limiting of the travel. Yeah. So you guys would have started with measuring that and ensuring that the shock absorber you were supplying yeah. had enough droop. Definitely. And then when it was compressing as well, that the bump stops were taking the, the work before the shock lost yeah. travel. Yeah, absolutely. And look, we went through that process, we altered some bump stop heights. Um, there was a strap that now works well with the shock. So the shock is well protected and that's got to be Fundamentally, that's, that's the most important part about the signature trailer is that the shock is not exposed to full top out nor full bottom out. It's well protected and look, service life of that shock absorber, we're, I mean, we're, we're expecting big things from it, that's for sure. Mm. So from a warranty perspective, it'd be the same as recreational then, four years, unlimited um, kilometers. Yeah, absolutely. And, look, and, there, and there's no reason for us not to offer that warranty. Again, four shock absorbers in this, in this trailer. There's a serious amount of dampening in the trailer and we see, see no reason why not to offer a, you know, a huge warranty with the shock. We know the shock's good for it, mm. um, so absolutely. Mm. Now there's some really trick details that we saw on the dyno testing before as well that you showed me around the bushes that are at the top and the bottom of it. So it's using yep. eyelets top and bottom. Yep. Now you mentioned they're fully serviceable, yep. but can you just run us through so the, the viewers know about the way the crush tubes are designed and the different bushes you use and, and what the impact of that is from yep. the usability and, and life yep. service life that you should get? So when we talk about the bush, firstly, it's a rubber bush. The bush itself is an hourglass shape. So the bush is allowed to pivot within the metal eye ring in the, in the shock absorber itself. The important part about all of that is the bonding between the inner tube and the entire stresses are placed on that tube itself. So essentially the shock absorber is free to move around on the rubber and not pass any side load down onto the rod seal. Yep, so that should massively increase life expectancy because you're not getting as much friction on the inside of the Correct. shock. Correct, yeah, side loading is what we're trying to reduce. So side loading is you know, the, the, the thing that's gonna really hurt a shock absorber. So by reducing the side loading, we're reducing the load off the bearing. Mm, um, so, so mate, yeah, look, the, the hourglass thing is something that we've incorporated in, in most of the four wheel drive range that we do here. So it's, um, 
It's not something that we've just come up with in the last you know, couple of days. It's something that's been in service now for over 25 years. Beautiful. So walking around the factory and the warehouse today, it's clear there's a huge amount of expertise and a massive product lineup. How, how are you guys looking to evolve in that RV market? We've been playing around that sector for quite some time. Behind the scenes, we've been involved in motorhomes and, and camper trailers. I suppose the signature camper trailer program is the first time we've, you know, we've come out and said, hey, we're actually working with a manufacturer now and this is what we're doing. I suppose there's no limitation really on what we can offer anyone that wants to join us in a program and developing a complete suspension for any trailer. Um, we see no real difference between the suspension on you know, the Signature trailer and say a Land Cruiser or a Ford Ranger. Typically uh, a shock absorber is a heater conductor and we're in the business of ironing out the bumps. Yep, and you've got the skills to get the lens right, get the valving right, get the bore size right, yep. get the fluid, the foam, so yeah you can engineer the right solution for almost any trailer. Yeah absolutely. Brilliant, thank you Simon. No worries. Thanks for coming down, Mark. Now you're one of the first RV manufacturers to jump on board with Tough Dog. What drew you to them? I've spent a little bit of time on the tracks with the guys from Tough Dog previously to us choosing to use them in the campus. We've done quite a few full drive trips with the boys and what really impressed me is actually how much work they go into in terms of setting the cars up. And around the campfire, that got talking into how we could actually better set up a camper trailer to, to basically behave the best it possibly can on the road. Gotcha. All right, so you saw their expertise, you saw their experience firsthand. What was the decision process behind actually realising you needed to change the shocks and the suspension in your trailers? Yeah, a big part of trailers and what people don't sort of realise is how much you can actually control the car when the trailer's moving around on and off the road. And the guys at Tough Dog are obviously experts in setting up the, the car and in suspension in general. We're pretty good at setting a trailer up. Um, and we sort of spoke about how a heavy trailer or a, or a trailer that isn't set up properly can actually control the back of the car, it can move around on the road, it can scare the bejeebas out of you if it's you know sort of not set up correctly. And you know things like sway, things like towable weight sort of all came into it. And when we actually started talking to the guys, they were really interested to actually work out what the weights were and how how it was impacting on the dynamics of the car, but also the dynamics of the trailer. And that sort of that was the starting point to try and work out what what needs to be changed in a shock or in a suspension system to best make it sort of behave on the road as it should. Hmm. And talking to Simon earlier, like he showed us some of the testing process that goes into the shock absorber work they do. Yeah. You obviously had first-hand experience with the testing with these guys. Can you tell us a bit about what it was like from a towing perspective? Yeah, I was really impressed from, from the get-go when we actually first sort of came and met Simon. So hadn't been out on the tracks with Simon, but came and got introduced to Simon. We started talking about some of the different behaviours of the, of the campers and the caravans, um, the different weights. We've, we deal with a lot of different supplies and generally what we get asked is, oh, how heavy is the camper and that's pretty much it that's sort of all the information that's you know that's requested simon went into detail about well you know where's where is the axle how's it performing what table weights are going onto it and we actually got down into the nitty-gritty of um what really impressed me was actually not just the, the compression but the rebound mm. and what we learned through the process with simon is that the rebound is having just as much, if not more, um, impact on the trailer than, um, than than the compression, which most people just generally look at the valving and the compression. So in terms of the testing, Simon actually developed us a prototype kit with um, uh, a little readout so we could check the, check the temperature and we absolutely put that, uh, that prototype kit to the ringer. So we ended up um, dragging it from Sydney down through the roughest road that we could find all the way down to Batemans Bay, took it back up to Sydney, checked it, and then actually took it for a long haul trip down to Adelaide. So we drove it to Adelaide and back, um, tested it again, and it was it was a couple of months. It was only after we'd done these decent drives and, and played around with it on a few different weights and a few different size campers that we um, that we were happy happy to basically you know, give the green light for that system. So you're, you've now committed to this, haven't you, across all of your hybrid trailers? Yeah, we have, yeah. So basically now as um, in all of our hybrid, all of our hybrid campers, um, it's a standard, it's a standard setup um, across the range. Beautiful. Thanks, Mark. All right.